so we rejoin with team 76 as we embark on another leg of this adventure in the previous one we started this session with them speaking and meeting a fire elemental warrior after some very long conversations with this thing and realizing that it takes everything you say literally and has one goal in its existence is to destroy evil And between deliberations of Karen and Ace to Dex, Dex figured it would be best to taunt this demon, or not elemental, into thinking that they were fighting it because Ace discovered that they were being watched by hundreds of crows on the outskirts of the sacred grounds that the elemental was protecting. When Dex made his attack, the elemental retorted, and they all ran back to the church where they the conversation continued with the elemental it was almost one-sided as they just kept asking it questions on what it wants to do and trying to inform it on things that it cannot comprehend ace karen and dex then go to leave the church leaving the elemental making plans to lure the swamp thing and possibly the witches up there discovering Minor truths? Maybe lies? And we rejoin with team partial of Team 73 in the car, heading back to the hotel to pick up their member that was unfortunately food sick. Food poisoned. You know, um, Val, I... I it, you, you should probably uh, think a little harder before you uh, drink dead man's blood. You know, I, I hear it is bad for a vampire's health. Thou also appears to have gone mute from the uh, poisoning from the dead man's blood. <laughs> While Val contemplates that, I do want to say I, uh, when we were leaving the church, I started to try and magically heal myself on the way over there. I don't know if you want to roll for that or do whatever oh, but you're good uh, i will say you spend an hour it gets done you're good the drive back is good enough all right so do i i got two harms we take down just one yeah just take it down by one okie dokie anywho so in the meantime <laughs> what exactly is our plan going forward I think we, we need to make a phone call, definitely. Um, I think if we are going to literally do the opposite of what we were told to do, we should at least confer. Yeah, I can uh, agree with that. I think I actually suggested that, you know, 20 minutes ago, <laughs> two weeks ago, whatever that was. <laughs> uh, so I'll call... Uh, I'll call Samuel and uh, give him the rundown. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll put him on speaker. I'll put him on speaker. You, you, you the rest of you are better with uh, words than I am. Um, especially, especially you, Karen. Mm. You're, you're a rather wordy individual. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I will, uh, I'm pulling out my phone and I'm, I'm, again, I, I, I'm just punching his number in from memory. So you see me just slowly, yeah. just pointy finger tapping my phone until I get his number punched in and I press send. You and don't I even am... hear the dial tone. It goes straight to voicemail. I put him on speaker. And I wait to hear the beep. And uh, I just sort of hold the phone out in my hand and just dramatically motion with an open palm to them like the floor is yours with... Yeah. You the hear the machine. voicemail go off, and then you just hear, Holiday. And then, beep. Uh, call me back, dude. The phone! Hi, the hi phone. Samuel. Uh, oh, god damn it. So, uh, so, some new developments that we oh. need to urgently uh, confer with your likeness about if you could post haste. Uh, return the phone call back to us. That would be sincerely appreciated. Thank you. Uh, sincerely, Dex. 
and I hang up the phone. <laughs> Yours truly. After a couple moments pass, Karen, your phone rings, and it is Samuel calling you up. Hello? Um, hello, dude. <laughs> well? <laughs> Can I help you? <laughs> dude? <laughs> Guy? Yeah, um, so... Oh, I don't even know how to put in the words. I am... Ugh. So stuff happened, and we're in a bit of a bind. You're being very caring. You should ask him how he is. Shut up, Dex. Okay, thanks. On a side note, I have no idea what's going on, so because I wasn't here last game, so someone talked me through this one, obviously. Oh, oh, yeah, hand me the phone, hand me the phone. I don't remember any of that. Oh, yeah, yo, yo, give you the, give you, yeah, I can hand you the phone. He's going to hate me immediately. <laughs> Hello, Samuel. How are you? Uh, Dex, can you do me a favor? Please pass the phone over to Ace, since Karen does not want to wish to speak with me. I'm driving, uh, you know. But sure, sure. But first, how are you? Busy. Okay. Ace, here you go. Uh, yeah. Hello. What do you need? <laughs> Oh, um, uh, uh, advice on protocol, I suppose. So you hear a loud, audible sigh come from the other end of the phone. <laughs> right. Uh, I I know we're not exactly your. Uh, yeah. Preferred favorite. Anyhow, so we made contact with the witches. We made contact with the witches' problem. Turns out the witch's problem may not really be so much as the problem as are the witches. Looks like they might be sacrificing some innocent people to maintain longevity. And the thing that is haunting the witches is basically pissed off because they're just killing innocents. And I'm pretty, pretty, pretty sure that the witches are going to start haunting us because we didn't kill their problem. And they figured out that we figured out that they're killing innocent people. Oh, hand me the phone. Hand me the phone. Uh, well, I mean, it's still on speaker. So, no, no, no. I, I believe we have successfully deceived the witches, Samuel. See, I, I, I got into a fake fight, see, with uh, this this forged being from heaven. It's some uh, creature that uh, it serves the angels. It, it's forged in heaven to... It enacts fiery, heavenly justice. That's what this being is. So, the witches, it seems, might be pretty evil, and we get sent out here to help the witches. Where do we stand on what to do next? So, I, I think the witches don't suspect anything, though, because they, they, they were looking through the crow's eyes, and they saw me fighting the thing. And I I, I say out loud, I say, air quotes, fighting right, the thing. All right, all right, all right. Listen to me. You are all have hunters. Do your job as best as you see fit, please. No casualties. What if the casualties are the witches? Do your job. Protect humanity. And then he hangs up the phone. Well, uh, I think that makes things pretty clear. You know, I, I really had to admire the amount of freedom he gives us, considering he knows how bad we fuck up situations. Uh -huh. I'm... Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a little perplexed by the whole concept myself. What are we listening to right now? I have muted the, the music button. that I played in the background, but uh... it turned into somebody just screaming at the wind. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know it was going to do that. It just sounds like a homeless man that's just angry at the wind. <laughs> now I'm sad I had it muted. <laughs> I can't concentrate with music in the background, so I always have to mute it. Um, well, uh, I, I think things are pretty pretty crystal clear, uh, personally. Um, you know, I, I think... Uh, 
Yeah, I, I think Samuel basically just told us that we should kill these witches. You, uh, that that is my interpretation of that conversation. That was uh. Well, that's the vibe I, that I was getting is like, if they go, they go, but don't make it a priority. I have a but to save humanity, and they're not technically human anymore, right? I have a question Samuel for the keeper. Keeper has answers. So, well, here, here's well, here's my idea, and I don't know if I could read. If I went back to a research area to do research, I'm wondering if there's a way I could look up a way to dispel the witch's longevity. Oh man, that sounds like uh, you want to make a roll. I do want to make a roll, but that's the thing. I didn't know if that's a roll I can make here, or if that's a, I just need to go ahead and, like, make my way to our library to make that kind of roll. I'm going to say you're going to have to find some type of uh, mystic library for that. Okay. Do we do we know of a mystic library in our current area? I know my office back in New York was where we were doing that at, but, like, we're not in New York. We're out in the Louisiana. To buy take you there if it wasn't for the fact that somebody took one of my feathers. I well, shout let's, out let's be honest. You kind of brought that on yourself. Mm. Oh, you know what? While we're on the road, I uh, I will sneak a quick peek into the comic book. Um... It shows you a little bit into the future, typically, but it's also based off of what the witches, I guess, assume would be the future, or what they they foresee. Hard to tell. That's why I'm curious what might be in there. Are you driving back to the comic book shop? I think right now we're driving to the hotel to go get Val. Yeah, y'all pick up Val. She's just ominously quiet. Okay, that works too. Val. I'm literally like yeah. snapping my fingers okay. in front of Val's face. So, Gavin, uh, Brent is not here, so Val is ominously quiet. So, Yes, I'm ominous, I'm ominous, stay ominously quiet. Okay. I'm ignoring the angel as much as I can. Val, okay. you really shouldn't have drank that dead man's blood. Say that again. I said you really shouldn't have drank that dead man's blood. Of course you were going to get food poisoning. Uh huh. So, if y'all want to drive back, let's say that you have during the phone conversation, you've already gone to the hotel, picked up Val. If y'all wish to go to the comic book shop, you can. We could just fast forward past skipping the uh, swamp if you want. Or if y'all want to take a nice little stroll. It is kind of in the middle of the day. Yes. I think we should take a nice no, little stroll. St stroll to where? We're just oh. stalling. The lake. Yeah, but I mean, to are you really going to try and drag the, the swamp monster thing to the the church across town? I could fly it there if it oh wasn't Oh my god, we got it. We know. Just frustrated. Well, Dex is frustrated. I don't really care. <laughs> well, then, next time, don't attack old women. You're supposed to be a divine being. Yet you were scaring the elderly. Like, I, I can't make this shit up. In in my defense... There's I no defense to that. ...that they would freak out from seeing a wings. And a giant flaming sword. As it you were, hard I, to keep track of what is considered to be normal to humans. You know what? I'm not. I'm not even going to entertain this uh, notion any further. So, what's what's the plan here, guys? What do we want to do? We got a comic book shop, an army, or however many witches that are keeping a close eye on us. The only thing I can say is, if we are going to try and stall time to figure out what we're going to do with the witches, the witches know we have. They have two different problems. They have the swamp monster, and they have Mister Flamey Face. Flamey face, we're kind of just letting that set for the time being. We can go to the swamp monster, and as long as we're dealing with that, the witches think that we might be still helping them. Now, I don't so know. Are you suggesting open battle with the swamp monster. 
I am suggesting that if we don't have a plan of action, we can at least get more information on the other thing that's involved here. One way or the other, this flamey face man, it, he, we know where he stands and why he's there. Now, I don't know how much he might be the swamp man is tied into the thing with the witches. Because, let me put it this way. Flamey face does not like what the witches are doing. Swamp man might just also not like what the witches are doing, but he... I assume we'll probably be tied to the swamp, but we might be able to gain some knowledge on why he's where he is. I mean, these people don't just pop up out of nowhere for no reason. The whole reason Flamey Face was there was because they were making sacrifices. Were they also making sacrifices in the swamp? Did they summon a monster that turned on them? I don't know. It just seems it's very unsolved. Maybe if we took another visit to the comic book shop to the witches our interaction with them in broad daylight at least because we don't want you know we want a deterrent to conflict if they happen to be on to us they're not uh, vampires I, I know that but they don't exactly want to see I'm, I'm coming to grips with what seems to be normal to be hu humans and I imagine bolts of magic shooting out of a comic book store would not be taken as a normal sight I'm going out on a limb on that one actually I'm, I'm, I'm sure gonna that. say I'm afraid to go into the comic book store without a plan because, one, I saw how many sigils and things are in there. It is a defensive fortress. You won't even be allowed to go in there. So then it'll be two of us. Three of us. Again, we're trying to convince them to come out of their fortress, which they have no reason to do, unless we can give them a reason which we don't have. So, how are we going to say, hey, you know how you're suspicious of us for catching on to you? I want you to come out of where you have all the advantages and meet us on a level playing field for no reason whatsoever. Perhaps Spin that around for me to make it sound appealing. Perhaps we approach this from a, a double agent sort of standpoint. We, have, we can tell them that we have the fiery being contained in a church that little bit of knowledge is nothing that will be advantageous to them but it's telling them information that they might feel that we don't have to give them all the same okay what's the follow up we tell that them that he's trapped in a church we can work together to slay the being then when we lure them to the church we simply turn on them uh negative I, I can tell you right now, I see where this is going, because they're going to say, no, that thing murders us. We wanted you to come out here and deal with that thing. We're, we're not going to go into there because that's super dangerous to us. Like, I'm, all, I'm all for laying a trap Valky. here, guys, but you got you to gotta give me something here that's going to make it worth their while to put themselves at risk. So what can the flame... Know? Can the flame thing go into the comic book store? No, it cannot leave the grounds of the church. So it doesn't have to stay in the building, but it, it can't leave the, 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 the grounds around it. Do we know who the leader of the witches are? Pretty sure we do. Okay, then we kidnap the leader of the witches, and we drag her to the church, and the other witches will follow. Okay, that that is a very simplistic version of a very complicated situation. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm going to go ahead and throw it out there and say this lady has been able to live for as long as she has because she has countermeasures to a snatch and grab approach. Yeah. Well, how? Oh, oh, we... Well, how about this? I will we... walk into the comic book store. I will command them... To go to the church because I had that ability. You know how I, I remember reading a story once of of a Trojan horse. So we we build something right and present it as a gift, and uh, uh, we we put our, ourselves in this. Never mind, I forgot where I was going. With that you guys. Can or do. I just command them to go to the church, and thus they will. So we wear disguises. Or I command them to go to the church, and thus they will. He, he, here's the thing that I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and lay out for you. You're talking in about walking into, basically, 
the enemy stronghold that has every type of anti-magical defense. This is a coven of witches, and you're going to go in and use magic to just say, do what I want. Well, I mean, the lady, the remember the, the girl that was working at the counter? I told her to give me questions and answer my questions, and thus she did. Here, here's a plan. Here's a plan. We sabotage the plumbing of the comic Shut book. Shut up! And I make her feel as though she has... That was going to backhand Dex. I'm going to block the backhand. Try to. Yeah, you can most definitely block the backhand. And I make her feel as though she has to defecate, but with her bathroom out of order, she will be forced to leave the building. I like all of these ideas. Every single one of them. I mean, I'm just just going to throw it out there and say she literally has wards against Dex even being able to come in. Odds are she has wards to keep out vampires too. She only lets in the people that she wants to let in. So I'm not just trying to be a negative Nancy and just shoot everybody's ideas down. I'm just saying, okay, if we go in and none of this works then what do y'all want to do? Because, again, we're trying to coerce someone that is in their stronghold to just come out and make themselves uh, very vulnerable. So Zed speaks. Form. And Zed, the whole time he's been sitting in the middle of the back seat between uh, Val and Dex, and he speaks up to all of you, and he says, Wow, all of these plans sound awesome. Karen, do you have one? God, God no! What? I'm just driving. Someone else. This is a I mean, nest. I, I, I do feel like we've been driving around like, in circles for a while. I'm going very slowly, and it's my numbing. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. We purchase yeah. some chloroform, and you walk in and just just do a what's that? What, what what's what's that over there? And as soon as they I turn their back, these, chloroform over the face. We all drag of these her out, take her to the church. Are garbage. All all of all of them are garbage. Don't they have a home to go to? Why can't we just wait on for them to lock up and then just snatch <laughs> like, them up? Do they live there? I don't know. Do they live above the house? Wait, wait. Is is this? Are we doing a stakeout? Are we doing a stakeout? Are we are doing we a stakeout? Let's do a stakeout. Zed oh, grabs it, it, Karen's chair and starts to shake it. Are we doing a stakeout? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're doing a stakeout. Out. We're sedating so this one over here. If we're going to do a stakeout, I'm going to go hide in the woods outside of the car. It, oh, it'll be great. We'll get some snacks. No, no, out of yeah. the car. I'm going to be well, out of the no, car. There's no woods, per se, within, like, a minute of the comic book shop. The comic book shop is in downtown. So imagine That's fine. I don't care. I'm going to go hide in the back alley. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to be in the car. With... He's just leaving. Okay. I'll, He's just I'll, get, I'll get some jerky. Yeah. I'll, I'll get some chips. We'll get some nachos. Okay, sure. so are y'all are y'all heading into town? You're gonna to be like a block away, somewhere where you can still see the door. Uh, get me a Slurpee. Uh, you know what? Uh, let's go to town. I want to get a pair of binoculars. I want binoculars too. Easy enough. Uh, you open up the glove box, and there is a pair of binoculars in there. I need my own pair of binoculars or a spyglass. Can I get a spyglass? I want a spyglass. I've always wanted to do a stakeout. All right, well, we need we need code names for the stakeout. I'll be um. When I'll be finding the nearest coffee house, and we're getting when, coffee. Yeah, right beside the comic book shop is a coffee house. It's a Starbucks. That's a bit awkward, considering I'd like to not be directly next to the place. Did I say right next to it? I meant a block away from it. Sweet, I will enter the Starbucks that is a block away. I enter the corner slash trap. adjacent to. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm getting me a strawberry frap. Sure. And, and and a buffalo Dude. chicken wrap. Yeah. Do they have they don't have that. Oh. I was like, they don't they don't have those. I'm like, no, you get your bacon, egg, and gouda or spinach wrap, and that's what now. Yeah, that's what you yeah. get. They're you basically like we have oatmeal raisin cookies and dried bread. Yeah. It will take all of that. Yeah, oh, it's wow. like super stale bread. Uh it sounds sitting good. there for like three weeks. Yeah. Perfect. So it's Val is gonna go. As they go in the coffee shop, she's going to go around to, like, the, is there, like, a back alley, like, a back way? There is most definitely a back alley. 
she's going to go hide in the shadows of the back alleys where she can see the back of the comic book store. Okay. Behind the dumpster. And uh, give she's going to wait there. Give me a act under pressure roll. Please. Yep, give me one second. I'm, I'm not, I have to do it through Discord. Yeah. I uh, just rolled 2d6s. Mm-hmm. And, okay, so... Karen and Dex got coffee. I got a strawberry frap. All right. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> we stopped by Starbucks. Got it. We. Eight. Uh, that's a six and a two with a total of seven. Uh. Wait, what? Wait, no. what's? What? Um. It's an I got a seven. You got Plus, eight. wait, what's under? What's act under pressure? The cool. Yeah, so it's a seven. Okay, Wait, so you have yeah. a minus one to that? Six plus... Oh, sorry. No, it's an eight. Sorry. Yeah, your cool is zero. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's makes results. All right. Yeah, so you, you hide out in uh, in the alleyway. Okay, What what is the rest of you doing? Uh, I am buying a bag of teriyaki jerky from the 7-Eleven around the corner. Yeah. Yeah, you get it. And Ace, Karen, while Dex and Val are gone, and Zed is passed out in the back seat. Um, yeah, I'm just chilling in the car. I mean, it's still like early daytime, right? It's right in the middle of the day. Yeah, it, let's say it's like two, two o'clock, two, three o'clock. I'm also getting a big old bag of salt and vinegar chips. Yeah. Uh, well, since I can't necessarily do the, the the research, you know what? Here's what I actually want to do. Um, I I will just sit there and like with my little notepad, I will start drawing the uh, rune that I learned from watching hers, her thing, and just try and get a better understanding of runes in case I need to try and dispel or take one apart, unweave one from her story, just to see like how the patterns work. I just want to like study that so. Uh, I don't know if that's just like a, a weird role or what, but like I just want to try and get a better understanding going forward about how her glyphs work. Okay. Um. Hold on one second. I'm uh, reading something real quick. Okay, yeah, so, you... I know, I got something, like, really obscure there, but, you know. Go ahead and... Arcana check. No, do an investigate a mystery, uh, but use your weird. Or, actually, uh... Let's see, what's the biggest threat, this way to protect the victim. What can it do? Investigate a mystery. Yep, that's an investigate a mystery roll. Alrighty. What can it do? I can do that. That's a that's a sharp. Sharp. Yep. Most dead. <laughs> <laughs> Wowzers. Well, I All right. It it's yeah. You, they're pretty. Uh, I know they're pretty. You know the image. Now but you just, you just... Jesus. yeah it's you you know the way the rune is shaped but your magic is different you use a lot of artifacts uh to that are imbued with magic and it's just this is different it's a different type of magic just it's just hard to grasp a hold of yeah that's fair yeah. wow that was shit tastical <laughs> That was something special. I just just wanted to just like. I was, I was still not great, but you know, just it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to just, I just wanted to cleanse my palate of the double ones. That's all. All right, but that that's all I was trying uh, to do for during experience. the time frame. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right, because I fucked that up for for realsies. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean, are y'all gonna sit here for like the next six hours? Because this place doesn't close to like seven, eight o'clock at night. What else is there to do? 
Well, I mean, we could have gone over to the where Swamp Thing is in the meantime and then just come back here in the evening, but, you know, we wanted to come directly oh, here. We, we should we should go to where Mr. Popo disappeared. I mean, as long as we can make it there and back in, you know, five hours and not be chased by the police or having dead people and et cetera, et cetera. So after... I, I still think the disguise idea is a valid one. So after probably about 30 minutes of y'all just continually discussing things, uh, you do see <laughs> Alexandria walk out of the store, lock the door, walk across the street to the 7-Eleven, and within a couple minutes she comes back out with a big slur slushy. And she's, yeah, she's just like hanging out, smoking a cigarette, out by the 7-Eleven, looks around. I duck. Well, you're yeah, like a block away, so it's like... I still duck. Okay. <laughs> that's that's yeah. a jam. Yes, and she just walks back across the street, uh, goes, but unlocks the store, goes back inside. Mm -hmm. You see a couple, like, teenager kids come and go as the time passes. <laughs> I feel like we're getting pushed to do something instead of just fucking around, but man, we don't know what to do. Hey, you know what? I can't take a hit. I'm, I'm here. I'm here till ten. So we got like an hour and a half. We can just sit here and twiddle our thumbs. Right, this is y'all's game. You know what? Do let let's see. Uh, go look at where Mister Popo disappeared. I, I think that's what Turns we should do. Take up knitting. I don't know. <laughs> Hey, uh, <laughs> hey, 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 Zed. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you an invite to a game of Words with Friends. Oh God, this is what it's come down to. For the love of God, just tell us. No, I don't, we need I don't to play that game time. anymore. I'm, I'm above it. Oh, uh, Candy Crush. Oh, you know what? I actually got. Uh, are we doing anything right now? Sadly, pretty much just. All right. Well. Uh, no. You you know how to get in touch with me, and he pats you on the back decks, and pats mm. Karen on the arm, wait, and he wait, just teleports away. No, no, no. He still hmm. teleports. Yep. I pick up my phone and I call him. He teleports back. What's up? You're supposed you to, to, you know, wait here. For what? Us. We're not. Okay, fine. And like he just pulls out a pillow out of nowhere, in his trench coat, and just like curls up in the back seat. Yeah, wake we're, me up when something happens. We're, we're angels. We don't have to sleep. Yeah, well, I'm lazy. All I'm right. just, like, I'm he ready pulls for... out a blanket oh, sorry, from one here. of his pockets and throws that over him, too. Just curled up in the back seat. Cool. Yo, I'm gonna I say this. I'm to fall asleep and start drawing pictures on his face. I'll let, let Ace do his thing. Let, let's just go to the swamp. Do the swamp. We try and kill this thing, or we... Hold on, let me move myself over and Karen's mic. I got it. Go to the swamp, we try to murder this thing, find out about it. If we don't find anything about it, let's banish it, destroy it, whatever it is we need to do. That earns us good faith with the witches, because they wanted us to get rid of that thing. So if we get rid of that thing, we can probably just coerce them to go out to... Come out to where your flamey face is, or whatever else. But one way or the another, I'm not just going to sit here all day. So let's go to the swamp thing, deal with that... And that'll set us up to be able to deal with the witches. Uh, I think that that, that that is a plan. Swamp monster! Let's go! Get it! There's someone going to get Val? She's right there. No, nope, Val's, in, Val's in the back alley. Again. You don't know what y'all are doing. I'm no, we, we just drive phone. off without her. <laughs> I call Val on the phone. <laughs> The fuck you want? Come back to the car. Why? Because Ace wants to do stuff. Fuck. Alright. And I'm going to go run and go zoom. And into the car. Yeah. yeah. You get there. Uh, you see that Zed has glasses and a beard and mustache drawn on his face. Oh, fuck. By Who's the way... 
I'm just saying, we could have poisoned the slushy machine, and then we would have just solved the whole problem with the witch, but whatever. Let's just go deal with Swamp Man. And then also poisoned the six-year-old who, uh, you know, begged their mom to take him to get a Slurpee. You know, you have to give them the details now. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Let's go. Swamp Thing, I want to go. Let's do stuff. Alright, everybody. In. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. <clears throat> yeah. So, Karen, that's where you're going? Yep. Alright, so you whip the car around real fast. And you vroom. Yep, you vroomy vroom down the street. You go to where you were initially pulled over the night before, because all this has happened in less than 24 hours, <laughs> being in this town. And, <laughs> and you stop where the cop was. And you can see yellow tape. I go over to the woods, where he was emptying his guts. Well, th this is all taped off is what he's saying. Remember, a yeah, cop got murdered nobody, here. There's nobody here, but there is the yellow caution tape all over the place. That limbo under the caution tape. Alright. I uh, run you can, track you fault can, over it. Yeah, you could, you could go ahead. Uh, it's only where you remember seeing the officer's uh, general direction, the tree that you hid behind. Um, is only a couple hundred feet away. Uh, yeah, as we're getting over here, can I, can I just go ahead and take a look around a bit and read a bad situation? Yeah. So that'll be sharp again. Let's see if we can get better. Yeah, no, I'll take it. It's a little bit better. Uh, that's a nine. Hold one. Are there right. any dangers we haven't noticed? So, how far out are you walking? Uh, I think we got about to where the the cop was crapping out so his guts. A couple hundred feet right up against the shoreline? That's uh, that's where Dex said he already made it to, so if it was already said, then it has happened. Okay. So, you get down to the shoreline. You start looking around. And you start noticing, like, as you've walked up to the shoreline, there was like a, almost like this mist coming off as the day has started to get cloudy and overcast. There's like this faint mist that as you are approaching the lake front, uh, this mist was rolling up into the woods. And now the mist is, it's almost in, at the lakeside, it's almost a thick fog. And when you turn back to look at, for the car, you can no longer see where the car is. Um, so I would like to... Oh, hold on. Let's, let's let Ace deal with this information first. Okay. Because he's the one noticing all this. So, I mean, just all... Aside from us having lack of visibility back to where the car was, is it, like, lack of visibility, like, we can't really see around us where we're at in general, or is it just, you like... You can see about 15 feet out from you, so you can still see each other as y'all are huddled close, but if y'all, you feel as though if you were to spread out more, you would not see each other. This, the fog has gotten to get pretty thick. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I'll just make a note... So, either we gotta stay together or we gotta get up. But, like, it looks like we're not gonna be able to see a whole lot around us here, guys. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that we be on guard. And I'll reach into, uh, into my coat and I'll go ahead and pull out my pocket watch in one hand and my, my knife in the other. Uh, I'm pretty sure you picked up something where you only need one of those, right? Yeah, but... I, I typically do it depending on what spell I'm using is what thing I use. Okay, okay. Gotcha. Uh, I would like to manipulate someone. Sure. I want to uh, manipulate Val. Uh, you can go ahead and make a roll for manipulate someone. Uh, well, actually, what are you saying? I'm saying, Val, uh, you should definitely go up to the lake's edge with your superior vampiric sight, and maybe you'll see something that we don't see. Okay, make a manipulate somebody roll. That's plus charm. Uh, so that's that's an eight. An eight. Okay. Can you manipulate someone that's already proficient in manipulating somebody? So yes. okay, 
there is no such thing as proficiency in this game for one and as a hunter you have uh your own will so you can either act on what he says or not uh, but, if you oh yeah go ahead yeah, yeah you got it yeah, yeah. Uh, i was gonna say that underneath the manipulate someone if you if he rolls higher than a 10 or 10 or higher he gets the mark experience if you do something if you do what he asks then you get to mark experience so but it's all up to you you get to mark an experience point if you just do if you do what I just asked you to do. Yeah, that's fine. I can go up there, I guess. Okay. So you're just gonna go up to the edge of the water and look around. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And you... I guess I'm. I guess I'm gonna read a. I guess I'm going to investigate a mystery. Whichever one you want to do. What do you tell me? What you're looking for first, and what you're trying to do. Well, I'm gonna look for anything that's creating this fog, or anything that's kind of off about the lake or the area surrounding. Okay. Uh, I really don't know what to roll yeah, for that. Give me investigate a mystery. That's plus sharp. Both both read a bad situation and investigate a mystery are sharp, but the what you're looking for it's under investigate. Okay. And actually, I was wrong. That's a nine, not an eight. But it doesn't make a difference. All right. I will note that down on my notebook that you are a liar. That is a... Uh, I think I get a plus one to sharp, so that's ten. Ten? Okay, so you get to hold two. Okay. So what is that? Okay, because I'm still lost with all this stuff. So what's that mean? Uh, you can ask between the following questions. What happened here? What sort of creature is it? What can it do? What can hurt it? Where did it go? What was it going to do? What is being concealed here? You can ask... Okay, what is... I'm gonna go with what is being concealed here. Okay. Well... Hmm. Your heightened senses as a vampire... Even though you cannot see very well right now with all this fog, you smell something that is disturbing. You know undeath. You are undead. But this place smells more. It smells rotten. It smells like... It smells like evil is here. And not only evil, but anger like it this swamp this lake is angry and it is corrupted like the swamp itself yeah so most let me just say most of this this is the lake but most of this landmass around y'all is swamp land okay so, and this yeah this area this particular area that you're in it is corrupted it feels angry it just it is not right and it so does have the instead of asking of how to kill it can i ask how to fix it mm. no <laughs> but you can ask what happened here what sort of creature is it what can it do what can hurt it where did it go or what was it going to do okay so i'll ask what did, uh what happened here Um. Okay. When you think about that question, you have to close your eyes and think real hard, and you're just taking in all the sights from the day before, the conversations at the book club, and you remember at one point in time, the lady at the comic book shop had mentioned that another member, a male member was conducting experiments in the swamp and it went. the experiments went wrong you don't know enough about arcane magic or witchery or wiccan, whatever their practices are, you just don't know enough to really figure that part out on what he was doing and what went wrong, but you know that something really bad went wrong here, some type of experiment inside the swamp and lake and it turned him into whatever this was. All right, so I'm going to kind of use my senses to get me back towards Ace. 
you're about and I'm gonna, away from them. You can just see them. Cool. I'm gonna go to Ace and be like, or I'm gonna have I'm gonna motion to Ace to come to me. Roll to manipulate someone? No, I'm just kidding. I come out. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna relay all that information to Ace. All right. Well, that puts another piece of the puzzle in there. So we have I mean, a. You're the one with the arcane knowledge, not me. Right. So we have a twisted and corrupted witch that has become a swamp murdering thing. So it sounds like we're pretty much aces on killing that or banishing it or whatever it is we need to do. And then follow through with uh, what we were saying before. We can use this as basically a, a sign of good faith with the witches to try and coax them out of their, their safeguarded fortress comic book store thing. So... Let's I mean, go. We may be able to convince them to come help us. So with while all of y'all are talking in the midst of y'all's conversation, you all hear a gentle lapping and splashing sound. And it almost seems rhythmic in motion. Not too far away, and you just can't see it. But you know it's out there in the lake, and it sounds like it's getting closer to you. I smell it. It. Um. That was I'm me. I'm, I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> like, could I smell like if it had blood? Like, could I smell it, it, its general direction? Uh, no, not really. It doesn't really smell like anything. Okay. Yo, I'm just saying. Well, there's no sense. Of, there's no sense of blood, so we should probably uh, skid skedaddle and get the fuck out of here. Well, if we skedaddle and get the fuck out of here, we're we're not any better off than what we were. I'm saying yeah, that, point, that, point. that thing comes out to eat something. We could have someone, whoever can volunteer to act as bait. They come out and the rest of us jump it. I, I know we were talking about trying to electrocute this thing in the water, but I don't think we have the means to really be able to do that here, at least not to the degree of actually shocking this thing to really put it down. Yeah. But it's coming. So we can either try and deal with this now, or we procrastinate even longer. So, so my divine As... powers grant me the ability to exploit the weakness of any sort of creature. Yo, while we're actually... talking, we need to either step away from this lake or do whatever, because it's coming as we're talking. So the lapping stops. And then you all, it's like you all simultaneously hold your breath for just a second. And then you hear some creaking sounds coming from off the shore, just right outside of eyesight. You know it's close. And then you hear a small splash in the water. And then a ticking sound. And then nothing. Yo, is this like the crocodile from Hook? Like it ate the clock? <laughs> uh, it, it might be some sort of suicide swamp monster. So the ticking sound, it just sounded like... And then it stopped. Uh, it was just a little bit of ticking and then stopped. And it was just right after the little splash. You just heard that little tick and then nothing. Oh, we Um, why don't we just kill it? That's that's what I'm saying. But if we we can take the time to be able to set any kind of trap, one person can stay, expose themselves. I hate to say it as much as it is, but let's call it what it is. While the rest of us in step back. I I call uh I call Zed on the phone. What's that, Karen? I was like, I don't have any particular power. So I'm, like, I'm, I'm muscle, but like, am I the bait? <laughs> I call Zed on the phone. He doesn't answer. I call him again. Doesn't answer. I'm gonna have to be bait. Alright, so who's gonna be bait? One, two, three, not it. I mean, I was gonna volunteer, but it sounds like Karen's volunteering. So, once more, as y'all are talking, you hear a voice. Uh. Hello? Is that said? Nope. Coming from the lake. 
Is there somebody out there? Hello? And then the lap and delay starts. And then it seems to get closer. It, uh, it, it can mimic voices. Can y'all hear me now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll I'll um, be I'll be the bait. And as I was the gonna say, I can be the bait because I'm faster than all of y'all. No, I can be the bait. As y'all are arguing, the lapping sound gets closer and closer, and you start to see a little metal boat just break right through the cusp of where you can see in the fog. And you um, see this older gentleman in the boat, and he just looks at all of you as his boat just rocks ashore. What are y'all doing out here? What am I doing? Oh, I'm you. Who the fuck are you? I'm fishing. Nice of fishing, ain't it? Huh? Why are you fishing in the middle of the fog? In a swamp I, I that likes to eat, to eat people. <laughs> That's an urban legend. <laughs> Slow your oh, The giant crocodile right? coming and eat him. <laughs> There is nothing out hours, here in the fog. I've been great. fishing in this lake since I was a kid. Yeah. Oh, man. I think we all know where this is going to go. <laughs> yes. Look, I'm just saying. A bunch of kids. You all look like kids just sitting around having a good time. I'm calling the cops. Would you like get a out of here? Teriyaki jerky. No. And you see him pull out his own cell phone. I'm calling the cops. Get out of here, kids. Not if I do it first. He just blinks at you. I want a hula hoop filled it. with salt. You do what? I want a hula hoop filled with salt. Why would you have that? Because <laughs> then I'm safe from everything. <laughs> I always have a salt circle. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, he just, like, no, slaps his phone a couple times. He's like, blast. He's like, well, y'all kids are lucky today. Seems that the cellular service is going in and out. Y'all better get out of here, because once I get back to shore on the other side of the lake, I'm I'm telling the warden that y'all are out like here. like a salt and vinegar chip. And he uses his oar to kick off of the shoreline back into the fog. As you He's hear him nice start... Guy. You hear the lapping starts up. Yo, uh, oh. that dude's about to go die. Unless we do something. Just... As soon as you say that, you hear a... Oh! Uh. And then the boat tip... You, or the boat doesn't tip, but you hear a loud splashing sound coming. Guy number two killed today? Uh, I just say, not it, and I duck behind a tree. Well, on, well, the, on the bright side. side, there's your bait. I jump in the water after him. Okay. I, I let him be bait. I'm pretty so, sadistic. I, 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 I do not him. jump in the water after him. Uh, no. Yeah, I jump in the water to go try to save his ass. Alright, I need you to roll act under pressure. Also, uh, like, how do we know how far out that guy was? Was it, he just? It was only a couple seconds past. He okay. was just probably yeah, maybe 20, 30 feet away. Yeah, like at best twenty feet. That's a yeah. five and a six, so I'll give him CPR if he gets here. But that's eleven. I'm not a strong yeah, swimmer. Yeah, eleven. So. Okay. I mean, yeah, that does. What are you trying to seek out to do? Because that act. Uh, yeah, you do exactly what you seek out to do. So, t describe it to me. Uh, she planned on jumping in the water to go to save him and see what the fuck just made his boat tip. So, you get to the boat, and you when you swim out, it's not very far. You get to the boat. The boat is fine. Everything's fine. And you're looking around. You don't see anything. You don't hear anything. And then you... Like right beside you, the old man splashes up out of the water, frantic, and he just looks at you, and he grabs on to the side of the boat, and he just screams, "Something grabbed me! Something grabbed me!" And then he just gets yanked right back under the water. 
Uh. Mm -hmm. Oxygen. I'm just literally diving after him. Okay. And you're gonna. Oh, what are you doing? You're gonna grab him. Try to grapple him. Yeah, I'm gonna grab him and try to see, and also try to see what the hell's dragging him under, and get him up above water. Up and above you water. see in the dark. I don't know. I mean, can I? Higher. I I don't know. Is it? it I mean, it, you can't. If uh, I will say, you can grab a hold of him, but seeing what's got him, unless you have some type of move that says you can see in the dark, I don't. I don't think it's uh on your actual character sheet. Is it? Hold on. Let me just make sure. Um, do, 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 do. Dark Aura. Do, 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 do. Hold on, give me one second. While he's looking that up, I, I'd say I uh, also chased after this, but we'll we'll figure that out as we go. Oh, are you getting in the water too? Uh, I'm not going to necessarily get in the water. I am going to make an ice bridge. Okay. Roll weird. So you're basically using ice wall horizontal. Yes. Okay. You can definitely do that. But we will say to get more distance, uh, you can make it shorter or thinner. So let's say you can make it five feet wide to get 20 feet long. Sure, yeah, that's pretty generous, I'd say. Yeah, no, I don't see anything that says I have dark vision. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's murky under here. You can just see this gentleman right outside your vision, but you can't see past him. And you can't see his legs. But as you, anyways, but as you, but as you grab him, you can definitely feel another force pulling you from the other side. The man looks absolutely horrified, and he is grabbing onto you with his life. Oh, uh, you do. Uh, I, I also have battlefield awareness, where I I always know what's go what's happening around me. Battlefield awareness. Where mm -hmm. where is that? Like, how can I how can I look and see what that says? Um, if you actually look at my uh, <coughs> PC bios, it's there. You always know what's happening around you and what to watch out for. Take plus one armor. Okay. On top so, of whatever you get. Yeah, the top part, that top sentence, that is just flavor text. But okay. the take plus one armor on top of whatever you get for your gear, that's the actual effect of Battlefield Awareness. Okay. So. Um, I w but you do have Unholy Strength, right? I do have Unholy Strength. So you can, if you want to rip this guy away from whatever's grabbing him, you can roll, kick some ass, and ace. You are making your bridge, getting across. Mm-hmm. All right, so, so I will roll some, kick some ass. Okay, you make the bridge. You you're going across, right? Sure. Yeah. All right. You you take off across. You slide a little bit, and you're able to catch your, your balance right before you slide off into the water at the end yeah, of the bridge. I'm basically frozoning it out here. So yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Eleven. All right. So you get to the end of the bridge, and right at the out, like about an inch away from the bridge, is the rope or the boat, and right when you get to this edge. You just see Val and this old man splash up out of the water. And Val, you see like an icy bridge back to the shore with Ace standing <laughs> there right next to the boat. Oh, it's good to see you. There's something under here. I like how he was so casual about it. <laughs> yep. There's something under the water. Dragged the fisherman under. He came up, went back down. And now we're here. Well, look, well then come on, let's go. Let's get him. Get him on the bridge. Let's go back, because that thing's going to murder him. All right. 
So I'm gonna like kind of pick him up in my arms, and I'm going to walk carefully across this bridge. So you want to put him on the bridge first, because the bridge is above the water. So you're gonna have to climb up onto the bridge first. Yeah, I'm gonna help. I'm gonna have Ace help me get him on the bridge. Okay. And then when I get on the bridge, I'm gonna pick him up in my arms and carefully walk to shore. Oh, okay. we we ain't carefully walking. We run and. Yeah. I feel like sliding with him on me. Uh, it's not smooth ice. I mean, he probably he could have added texture to it. Okay, then yeah, can... then if there's texture and Val knows it, then she's running as fast as she can. Okay. So yeah, y'all all get back to the shore. The old man huffing and puffing, and he just puts his hand on your shoulder, Val, and thanks you. Not a problem. Thank you so much. I don't know what that was. It just, I just felt something snatch me. Like right Which around the like a piece of jerky. Oh, yes, who are you? Yeah. Your religion that you just are convinced okay. is urban. No, this. There's no such thing as monsters. Uh, uh, well, well tell that to the thing that just tried to eat you. That's probably you kids. Uh, yeah, no. Trying and to play tricks happened. on an old man. Can, can you no, just no, that, make sure that it didn't bite you or anything? Can you lift up your pant legs there? Just no, to make I'm sure not you're getting right? undressed. I didn't say get not undressed. Bad. I said lift your pant legs. And what? Where did that ice come from? Hey, that guy in the trench coat. Yeah, I carry dry ice with me. <laughs> it's normal. It's fine. Don't don't look too much into that. I bet you y'all uh, are from the city. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Dry ice with them. City folk. And you're welcome. Um, let me just say this. Monsters are real. It just tried to eat you. Literally. Hey, uh, He's... Dex? Yes, yes. You mind pulling your, uh, sword out? Give us a little, li- give us uh, a little let's light. Let's not give Last the man a damn card I, that, I, uh, I lost sword. my feather. When you mention sword, this old man starts backing away from all of you slowly back towards the road. I mean, what, what was what, what's the plan here? We're just trying to scare this guy. Yeah, we were apparently trying to yeah. give him a heart attack. I wanted, I wanted him to see my face because I am a vampire. No, yeah. But again, really we are. To... In... You see, he's got a uh, he's got a skin condition. You know, uh, he can't go out in too much sunlight. His eyes are wide open, and he is just gawking. And then he looks past all of you towards the lake, and he just points and he goes, "What? What is that?" Um, that's the guy in a ghillie suit. You know, it, it, it's probably nothing. He just wants us to look away so that he can run off. <laughs> but I will turn back you? and take a look and see what is behind us. Who, who all is turning around to the lake? I am. I'm not. I am. I am. Okay. Ace. I mean, Dex. We'll start with you. This man. As his quavering voice says, what's that, and points to the lake. Within a blink of an eye, he turns tail and takes off running. Karen, Ace, Val. The three of you, as you turn your head slowly back towards the lake, suspicious as you are, Ace, he was not wrong. And you get this feeling as though you wish... He was, and this was a game. As you see this mound of swamp with these two gleaming yellow eyes with red pupils in the middle, its head pokes out of the swamp, and it starts as a lumbering mound to start walking up the shoreline out of the water. With seaweed and moss and vines and roots covering this creature's body it just gets bigger and bigger as it starts to walk towards all of you I'm pulling my whip go time boys and girls I pull out my sword (laughs) sounds so disappointed (laughs) I need 
I need Val and Dex to both roll. Uh, both of you have the unhuman strength, right? Unholy strength, and not, then holy strength, correct? Not really. Um, I have smite, which says my stuff counts as weaknesses, but right, 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 right. Nothing right. that says anything like that. Cool, 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 cool. I need uh Val. I need you to roll weird, and uh Dex. I need you to roll tough. tough. Okay. I need you to both make kick some ass rolls for me. That's, That's a, a ten. ten. Oh, both of you got tens. Yes, sir. Oh, great. So as you both pull out your weapons, you feel these vines quickly wrap around your ankle. Ace, you do a quick maneuver to use your flaming sword to cut the vines as you see the Sweet, I got a flaming sword? Underneath, or not you. <laughs> Quiet, you. I hate both of you for making characters with only, like, one syllable difference. <laughs> But, Dex, you use your flaming sword to cut these vines, and as the flame grows closer to the ground, you're able to see through the fog as your sword is swiftly cuts through the fog itself. And you can see that the ground around your feet is moving. Val, oh. you feel the same thing. Just vines wrapping around your ankle as you crouch down with your claws and rip them apart. And you, too, see the ground is moving. I stab the ground. Run. You, you stab into the dirt. Run. I, I, I stab it uh, a lot. Yeah. All the vines around you are just thriving. Uh, I'm going to um, make this a whole Karen. lot worse. Karen, Ace, um, we need to run. Yeah, running. Uh, Pulling after uh, the old guy. Yeah, just, I'm hauling ass. Deuces. I don't, I don't have anything to connect this. This is, I'm outside of my wheelhouse here. Uh, I'm going to... Knowing that, uh, knowing that, um, Karen is the more human one, as Val's running, she's going to scoop her up and book it. Why are we running? Yeah. We came out here to so, fight this thing. I Karen. I just drove you here. Karen, please roll, uh, protect someone for me. <laughs> that is you as a mundane you use charm for that uh, yes uh protect someone's tough yes but as a mundane you use charm because you have the let's get out of here with an exclamation mark so that makes you roll charm instead of tough oh look at there one charm instead of tough look at there all right uh and then it's two that's a d that's one d6 right uh two d6s two. If you want to yeah. just roll one, that's fine too. I can handle too that. Overzealous with that one, but that was oh man, that was a good one. Yeah, I... that was double sixes, but I got a little too fancy. Yeah, all the right. Fancy grounds keeps crashing every time I try to load in, and it just keeps kicking me out. So yeah, just call off your rolls as they come. Here, five, six, seven. A different seven. version now. Yeah. Got a seven. <laughs> You gotta okay. update your fantasy grounds. And Val, you said you wanted to grab Karen. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of like scoop up my arms as I yeah. book it. Uh, roll protect someone as well. And Ace, Dex, what are y'all doing? Uh, um, oh, you go right ahead, man. Oh, I just go stand next to Ace. I mean, I thought we were going to fight this thing, but everybody's running, so at the very least, I'll start kind of backing up, but okay. in the process... Ace, Ace my battle buddy, so I'm, I'm just going to the next day. Ace. I'm, I'm chucking a fireball. Yeah. Ace, yeah. every time you take a step back, the monster takes a step forward. It is mimicking your moves, almost exactly. Uh, yeah, you oh, when you okay. start using your hand motions to make glyphs, and you start mumbling things in the air, the creature is mimicking the exact same hand motions as you. Oh, that's fucking weird. Is it mimicking your my roll? No, it's not. Just Ace. It's it's literally okay. dead set right in front of Ace. I look at Ace and I say, Ace, do the Macarena. I'm not going to do that, but I'll just stop and like wave at him, all friendly style. 
it does not wave back. But it does stop moving. Uh, so y'all are stopped, right? I got uh, 12, by the way. Okay. Um, yeah. Karen, you turn to run, and as you go to run, something grabs a hold of your ankle, and you trip and stumble forward. And right before you... <laughs> right before you stumble and hit the face first into the mud, Val just scoops you up out of the air, and she just takes off running with you. Both of y'all doing, like, a three-legged race up the side of this hill. Classic. Um, Classic. Ace, Dex, as y'all stop incantating your step your spell and you're just holding your flaming sword i need both of you to roll kick some ass for me oh i'm so bad at that uh Can't you use some... weird for it no not for this it's only for one of them casting spells oh i i got a seven uh let's so see that is you're still holding the fire in your hands right ace e yeah okay then use weird for this if you're not going to release the fireball at the creature then use uh, use it for weird. Oh, well, that's a roll. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna have to call it back out then. Fourteen. So I got a seven, and he got a fourteen. Okay, I can't see your rolls, but I see his fourteen. I don't see his... Yeah, I don't see Oh, his. he's got hidden right. rolls. <laughs> he's still yeah. thing on yeah, that's because he uh, likes to lie and cheat. Yeah. No, no. I, I also no. like how half our team just, like, ditched us as soon as this monster came out that we were coming out here to fight. You know full well, well I am fully human with zero skill level except for charming... charming. I, I doubt. Hey, you have Whoa, a gun. You have, you have magical... Fabulous nails. Yeah, that too. Yeah, I have fabulous nails and a gun to take down a, a semi-liquid form. Yeah, you Don't you still have the gun. speaking bullets? I don't. I don't have the. I don't have the skill level for this there guy. You you do have tracking bullets and you do have a magical gun and magical fingernail. You do not a pop a cap. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't but know if my gun knows how to like kill a semi-liquid form yeah i mean i completely understand i would i would probably shit myself and try to get it too i'm not That's wasting exactly a bullet on what is it flur florb flurb yeah well it, it my whole thing is getting Karen out of there so that way val could go back and help fight anywho so this thing's mimicking me and it once you stop ink, it mimics your incantation of the spell. And then, so, but you're holding it, right? Yeah. And, Gavin, what did you say you got for your kick some ass? Seven, so mixed results. Okay, so, Ace, as you're holding it, you feel something grab at your ankles. And, Dex, as you stop moving, you get yanked face first into the ground. As something re grabs your ankles, and now you can feel the vines grabbing at your arms and your body. How is that mixed results? Well, that you're not pinned to the ground. It's just something is starting to crawl on your body. You just get yanked to the ground. Uh, I immediately cut at whatever it is that's grabbing yeah. me. You can definitely do that. Ace, what are you going to do, though? You have full range. You just feel something starting to crawl around your legs. Um, you, can, you can release the fire at the ground or the creature or whatever it is that you wish to do. Uh, yeah, here's what I want to try. Something weird. I'm standing near um, uh, b -b 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 Ace. Or <laughs> to Dex. You got me doing it now. I'm going to, instead of using the fire, I'll swap my incantation around. Because I'm curious what this dude's going to do. And I want to make an yeah. ice wall underneath me and Dex. That'll just lift us up off the ground out of the vines. Okay. So, you change the spell of fire in your hand to ice. And you shove your hand down into the mud. And you just see that the, all the mud freezes. 
and Dex, all the vines and roots that were crawling their way up on you and that you were cutting away, they all just get frozen solid as the ground beneath your feet in a ten-foot circle is frozen. And the creature cocks its head to the side and stares at you. I want to throw a rock at it. Oh my god. There are no rocks in the mud. Hey, no, I'm, just, I'm just going to hold up my hands and just... What do you want? Why are you attacking people? It just continues to look at you with its head cocked. Do you want to go back to what you were before? It does not answer you, and Dex, you can start to see the vines and roots growing over the frozen mud towards you. What are we doing here, folks? Are we reasoning with it? Are we killing it? I need to know now, because this is the what time. What is your name? What is your name? I say out loud. It does not answer. Dude, he's not talking. We either... It actually goes down to the ground. And it puts, while still looking at you, it puts one hand on the mud, and you can see its fingers start to elongate and dig into the mud like roots. All right, this thing killed a cop. I I'm just gonna go and call it. This is go time. And if nobody else is gonna do anything, I guess I'll just take the action. If I was able to freeze the ground underneath us and stop the roots, I'm going to try and do the same thing again underneath him. Okay. I don't have anything rain. That's why I didn't do anything. Karen had been there. I was going to ask for her gun, and I was just going to shoot at it. So, yeah, I'm going to try and put ice underneath this, this guy's hand. You, you tell me what to do here. Uh, Use magic. Let's use some weird, baby. Rolled a five and a six, and now a six and a five. That's another 14. So, Dex, what is it that you're doing? You're just standing there? Um, Karen's not anywhere nearby, I'm guessing. No. Okay. I was going to try to shoot at it. Um, you know what? Uh, so, how how deep is this water? You are standing on the embankment of the lake, and it is just muddy. How far away is this thing? About 12 feet. It's just right outside the circle. Can I throw a knife at it? If you have a knife, do you have a knife on you? I have a silver knife. Okay. Yeah, you can throw a knife at it. Yeah, I'm going to throw a knife at it. Okay. Kick some ass? Yeah. And Ace, you are trying to... That's an 11, by the way. Okay. Ace, you're trying to freeze the ground underneath? Yes. Alright, so you whirl up another ball in your hand of ice, and you throw this, like, ball of ice at its feet, and you start to see within a flash. The in it flash freezes the entire ground. And he looks up at you, and he just snaps his wrist that was frozen to the ground. And then he stands up. And you start to see, like, all the roots and vines from his arm regrow his hand. As Dex, you fling the knife at him when he goes to stand up, and it stabs him right in the center of the chest. It does not seem faced at all. Well, that's all I had. As the creature starts to walk towards both of you. The water that it, like, this creature is standing in is it, it what, like, is not ankle standing deep? in water. It is. It has come onto the shore. All right, I guess we're doing this. We're throwing down. Um, I'm gonna discharge it with my flaming sword and take a swing. Okay. Uh, roll some kicks some ass. That is an eight. An eight? Are you doing anything? I mean, if we're doing this, we're doing this, and I will. Uh, I know I seems to. Not help it, so I'll chuck another ice ball at it, or ice missile, I should say. 
Okay, roll some use magic, and Karen, Val, what are y'all doing? As you have ran back up the hill. Um, um what is my range for, um... You cannot see back down the hill towards the lake. There's too much fog. Well, that answers that question. <laughs> but you can see your car. Is the ground solid enough for me to drive the car down to where it was? You could, maybe, but it is a swamp, so you believe that you would get stuck. This is a kind of a dry hill, but uh, you figure if you go down there, you're either going to hit... If, you would have to be extremely good at driving without hitting any trees, but you think your car will never get out of it. Sacrificing a car just to get down there? Or just... Do I run the fuck back? I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, fuck. You can, you can turn tail and run back down there if you want. Annoying, because I just got out of there. Ah! Fight the thing. Well, I know I have to, but it's like... Kind of a pointless trip if we come here and then just run away from it. Uh, right. I was like, I was gonna, I was gonna fight it with my vehicle, but I don't know if my vehicle can make it down there. Ace, can you roll me weird again for your uh, next ice attack? It's next. Oh, okay, okay. Did I tell you I got an eight, by the way, that's for my it. stab? Okay. Oh, that's right. You're in fantasy. So, what are you doing, Karen? I'm getting in the vehicle, and I'm going to, because I'm a good driver. Uh, attempt to get his my end game here is to to mow the thing over with my vehicle as best I can without killing my people I, course, I will tell you this even if you roll well you will not get this car out of the lake by yourself Karen I can help you get the car out Let's just go. Uh, also, just for you, Keeper, if that ice thing hits him, uh, that would be two harm, and it is restraining. Okay. Okay, I'm going to drive my vehicle. A act under pressure. Roll some act under pressure for me. I already have once. It's been replaced. What is? The vehicle? Like, the majority of it's, like, oh, now okay. replaced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not the same well, car. I mean, really, yeah, it's barely the same car anymore. You are a typhoon, so you can just buy a new one. <laughs> I was like, thanks. There's no problem. Um, okay. Act under pressure. It's act under pressure, right? Yes. Oh. Well, that's just a plus one, so I'll love it. Yeah. Um Wait, doesn't she have something that says um when she acts under pressure she can use charm? Uh that is protect someone. Yeah. I do believe. Oh, okay. It does not apply here. Okay. So um eleven. <laughs> <clears throat> So, um, let me see, for your moves, your moves that you have, I'm trying to see if you have a specific move, uh, you have trust me, oops, power of the heart, let's get out of here, uh, and don't worry, I'll check it out, but that was from, uh, yeah. From leveling up. But yeah. Don't worry, I'll check it out. Whenever you go off by yourself to check out something scary experience. experience. Yeah. I'm okay, like, but so... I'm I'm not by myself, I'm with a with a hold your face. When fighting a Brain monster, farted. if you help someone, don't roll plus cool, you automatically help as though you rolled a ten. Okay, so I will say go ahead and mark an experience for right now. Uh, you I rolled a 10, which is a complete success, which means you are able to avoid all of the trees, and we will get 
to you next turn. Ace, you fling this ice ball at the creature, and when you go to throw the ice ball at the creature, he sticks out one arm and catches it. And you see his ent the same arm that he had already snapped, and you see his entire arm starts to freeze. And then he just breaks his own arm off. So he now only has one arm. Now I... You said... Hold on. You okay. You said that was how many harms? Two harms plus restraining? Yes. Okay. Well... Alright, and then you're attacking with your sword, Dex? Uh, yes, which I believe does four harm. Because um, it did three before, and I have Ancient Fighting Arts. Okay. And it makes him vulnerable? Well, I have Smite, which um, my body and Divine Weapon always count as a weakness against monsters I fight. Okay. So if he has a weakness, my sword is a weakness. Okay. And you rolled a 8. Yes, so mixed results. Okay, so you take you use the opportunity of this monster breaking his own frozen arm off before the ice starts to spread over its body and in this moment of opportunity you do one large chop right across its chest and you leave a large cindering slash across the front of its chest as this monster you hear a howling scream in pain from this attack as the monster reaches its one good remaining left arm back and it just slams you across the side of the ribs as you go flying 10 feet away from it i need you to take two harm yep um as you are so now just clarify, knocked away from it to clarify i had two harm but then you said on the drive back we recovered one harm Ace could recover one harm because he was using. So, I thought whenever there was like a scene swap that we recovered a harm. So would I still have two wounds then, or do y'all have any more first aid kits? No. Well, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I was not keeping track of that. <clears throat> uh, maybe I think I have one. I think I got one before. <laughs> Because you did, you did build one from what um, Timothy had. Jimothy. But, yeah, Jimothy. Yeah. And I think y'all used that at one point to first bandage up the wound for... But I, do y'all have any of that left? Hmm. I mean, you don't use the whole first aid kit whenever you bandage somebody. Yeah, but does Ace and Dex know that you're not supposed to use the entire first aid kit? I would we'll, think so. We'll, I mean, say, we'll say that you I can would know that you don't arm. have to become a mummy to, 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 to bandage up wounds. Okay, we'll, we'll say you can recover one of your harms, yes. So I'd be at three harm right now. Yes, but that uses up the uh, rest of the first aid kit. Wait, do you not have anything that blocks harm, man? Oh, yeah, I do. I do. I, I reduce harm by one. So never mind. I'm at two wounds. Okay. Yeah, because I have divine armor, which okay. uh, deducts one damage. So. so you you go to two wounds. Yes. All right. And as you are flying through the air, Ace, you hear the roar. Of familiar and a lot of snapping branches as you turn around and see these two headlights beaming in your direction what do you do uh gtfo i will so dad dive out of the way of where this fucking car is coming at me <laughs> okay karen i need you to roll mm, you're gonna hit this monster okay with the car you're gonna hit the monster but you're also going in the lake okay So well, I I'm... <laughs> it, it rarely is with our group. It's, it's, it's fine. <laughs> Sacrifices. <clears throat> um. I really hope there's nobody in the trunk of the car this time. <laughs> I've already well, forgotten it. It's too late now. Already forgotten, and it's too late now. 
Like, but our, our jars of pee are in the trunk. Can I just, like, so, bail out of the car before it hits the lake? Yes, you can, if you want to. I'll uh, bail it out of the fucking car before okay, it hits the take, lake. Okay, take, take one harm to bail out of the car. A moving vehicle, Tuck I'm and generous, and one harm for yeah. Val, not for Karen. Right. Because right, Karen, I'll you're driving. I'll take zero harm. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um... You see, you have the move called Power of the Heart. It says, it clearly reads, when fighting a monster, if you help someone, don't roll cool, you automatically help as though you rolled a 10. I would say, using a car to get the monster away from your friends is Solid helping help. someone out. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm going to say it's a 10. Cool. And you tell me what you're doing. Okay. So, um, so on my way down, this is like the the trip down the hill. I'm assuming. I'm cr like Cruella Deville-ing it at this point, <laughs> if you recall the movie. Um. <clears throat> however, I still don't run over anything, so that's pretty cool. I don't know how I managed to do that, but I'm like running. I'm hauling ass like a bat out of hell. Uh, I have rolled down my driver's side window, and I am screening eat shit. <laughs> I see Val tuck and roll. I'm like, well, all right, cool. And I'm ripping and... that and shit down your neck. <laughs> um, that sounds like a Misfits thing. Um, that is a Duke Nukem thing. No, oh, it's made its motto. Um, and I'm just literally just hauling ass towards Swamp Thing. I've got pedal to the metal. It is right. happening. So I will say, I, I want to ask and clarify this. You roll down the window. Driver's side, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that way you, you do have plans to get out of the car. Yes. <laughs> okay, so once you hit the water, you're diving out the window. Yeah, there, there's like a yeah a, a one to five second delay. Yeah, right. Okay. But yeah, I have an exit plan. I w I'm going to go ahead and assume that you are not wearing a seatbelt. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have been wearing okay. a yeah. seatbelt. Okay, yeah. So th there's not an obstacle between you and the window. I get it. You you dodged all the trees. So I'm just gonna assume like when you roll down the window, you have a seatbelt. Because you yeah. know you're, you're hitting the water. Right. So you drive down and you <laughs> you are screaming out the window. You see Ace right in the middle of your headlights. And you see Ace jump out the way. You see Val jump out the door, hits a tree. Thought in your mind, oh, is she ah. okay? Doesn't matter. Fuck this thing. <laughs> and you hit the, as you hit the gas to accelerate faster, you slam right into the monster. The monster leaning over the head of the car, and you are face to face with the monster. It's glowing yellow eyes, beady right, red pupils shining right into your eye as it also releases a scream at you too. Almost a cacophony of noises and sounds as it collides with the water and gets drowned. The sound starts to get drowned out. The car starts to slowly submerge in the water. And you, I need you to roll another act under pressure to get out of the car. Plus one. Eleven. Eleven. So you get out of the car as the, before the water can start truly flowing into the, the one window that you have open. But you, with the ice and this bridge, you're about, let's say, 25 feet away from the shoreline. So you have successfully gotten out of the water and start to swim back to shore. Ace, Dex, and Val. 
you have all just watched the car fly down the hill, hit the monster, hit the ice patches, hit the ice bridge, and fly off into the lake. The whole car's in the lake now? Yeah. Like, sinking? I oh, met, yeah. yep, the car's you, met Jesus. Once the car hits the ice bridge, the question is, did actually, I... once Women the car drivers. hits the ice bridge, you do not see the car anymore, and you hear a loud splashing noise. Because the fog cuts off right where the ice bridge. Um, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking around to see if she followed me as jumping out of the car, and when I notice that she didn't, I am running towards the water. I need all of you to roll protect someone if you are trying to go find Karen. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely gonna try. What is that? Tough. Uh, yes, it is tough. I'm good with those. And Karen, as you are swimming back to shore, you. I'm doggy paddling. I'm not a good swimmer. <laughs> As you are swimming back to shore, I'm the ice bridge to your left, you are trying to swim your best. I got a 12, by the way. And you feel something grab your ankle. And then you are dragged underwater. Cool. But... Freaking out. Freaking out. I am. Ooh! Oh, the... oh, I, oh, okay. Yep. Fingernails. Fingernails? Okay. I have fingernails. Let, let's let them roll theirs. Cool. And then, All right. So as you, real quick, as you're dragged underwater, you do not have the opportunity to grab a breath of air. Oh, so oh. you can, with your first freak out moment underwater, right. flashing back to the vision that you had. Totally. You are starting to choke. You can Ooh. already feel it. And it, it, you can, you're close enough to the shoreline where your fingernails can grab onto the ground, but it is mud. Yeah. And yeah. it's, you can't see down here. Right on a grip. Um, Ace, five. When you. <laughs> is that a treat five? Is there any, is there any modifiers or. Uh, that is the modifier. I have a minus one to tough. I'm a wizard. I'm not tough. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Ace has a concussion. Uh, when you f jumped out of the way and did your dad dive, uh, you went face first into a tree. So Ace is staggering. <laughs> I've got a five. I just got the little Tweety Birds like flying around my head right now. You got a five as well. Yeah, I got a five. Luckily, I actually rolled oh, good. Yeah. Or Karen would fucking die. Yeah, Val, you get up. You look so the next around. question is, am I dead yet? It's pretty much what it is. <laughs> Val, you stand up too fast to look around, and you just get lightheaded and dizzy. And then you feel this wet liquid dripping down the side of your head. As your vision starts getting blurry, you drop to one knee. You also have a concussion. Awesome. I need both of you to mark another point of experience for me. And Dex. And to put this in perspective, my normal lightheartedness aside, I am in full-on intense guardian angel mode. I am trying my best to save Karen's life. Dex, your other humanly sight and strength, you, your ribs hurt. It's hard to breathe. But you re your reactions are heightened as the adrenaline is pumping. Your muscle fibers are just feels like they're going to shred as you try to run as fast as you can and you dive into the water. You see a glimmer of it looks like two yellow eyes uh, right behind Karen and you can reach out and grab her. Uh, can I reach out and grab her while simultaneously trying to cut that motherfucker? Uh, well... <laughs> okay, one or the other. Okay, you, still have your, you still have your flaming swords out, so you can still see everything. Karen, I need you to kick some ass real quick for me, because you said you were going to use your claws? Yep. Or was that was that the ten? The four and the six? Uh, no, it was an additional. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, have to, I haven't rolled for it yet. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Please make this work. Six, seven, eight. 
Eight. Yeah, I'm just, uh... Paper cuts or dog bites? What are we doing? Eight. So it's kick some ass, plus two. Yeah, hold on one second. Um... Oh. Okay, so... My bad. When you did your help out thing for the four mm -hmm. and the six, uh, help out does state that it grants them a plus their roll. Uh, doesn't really matter for Val Ace because they both got fives, which turned into six, which are still failures. And so they both still have concussions. But Dex, you rolled a 12, right? I did. Oh, okay. So under protect someone, it says both you and the character you are protecting are unharmed and out of danger. If you are protecting a bystander, they also become your ally. I will say that... I mean, that's a perfect role on my part, right? Like, you yeah. see... You, you see... Uh, Karen, I need... What, you said that's a... What is that for tough? For, you? Uh, f for me, that'll be a total of eight. Eight? Okay, you yeah. see... And your nails do how much harm? Was that? Oh. Is it more what? than three? No. Okay. So you see Karen just trying to scratch and rip at these <laughs> lines <laughs> around her ankles, dragging <laughs> her underwater. Um, Is there any way I can cut the bitch? So <laughs> as you see Karen scratching and ripping at these vines, you see her body goes relaxed. And she just starts being pulled down almost like she slips into unconsciousness as you get up close and you are able to swipe with your flaming sword and just cut through the vines. Sweet. And when you do, you also grab Karen and start swimming back to shore and you hear once more the same voice as before. Pain. And then the eyes flicker out in the distance of the murky water. I just, I just get Karen up onto the shore. Just Karen, oh my God, Karen, Karen. As I, I literally just, is she conscious? Um, it's like one of those things that you see in the movies where she's unconscious until you pull out of the wall, and then she regains consciousness. And I mean, she didn't fully lose consciousness just for a second, but once you start screaming and yelling, yeah, Karen, taking me away. maniacally. <laughs> yeah. Your lungs are almost completely full of water. Like, you inhaled a Yeah. Okay. So I'm coughing up a bunch of fluid. Mm-hmm. Karen, Karen, are you okay? I've... I've... <coughs> I just... I grab her hand and throw it over my shoulder, and as quickly as I can make her do so, I am fast walking towards the shore. Ace, Val, you start to refocus on the situation. You can barely see the taillights of the car dipping underneath, like, breaking the threshold of the top of the water. Uh, and you see Dex and Karen dripping with water as they walk past you quickly towards back up towards the road. I'm just gonna start asking, Karen, are you hurt? A minute to collect. I think I'm okay, though. Lungs are on fire. That's gonna hurt for a minute. Is it gone? Did I get it? Yeah, you... I'm just gonna shout into the sky. Look, I realize I made a mistake, but I need my power now more than ever. Please. So all four of you are walking back up to the road? Yes. Yeah. Okay, at a quick brisk pace. You are uninterrupted. The ground underneath your feet has stopped moving. Okay. And after a minute of trudging up the hill, you are back on top of the road. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit down. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit down for a minute now. <laughs> what I do do at this point? I'm just gonna. I'm gonna try something. Um. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk over to Ace and Val and just say we didn't come out here for nothing. I refuse to let this have been for nothing. And I'm going to put a hand on Val's shoulder, put a hand on Ace's shoulder, and I'm just gonna try to teleport to the creature. Okay. What about Karen? What do you, what'd you say you were going to do? I'm too busy taking a five minute break and trying not to smoke anything. <laughs> smoke anything I can get in. I'm just neat. I'm trying not to drown in my own fluids still. Okay. That's, I still have to collect myself. It's going to be a minute. Okay. So, Ace, are you there? What's up? Val, are you there? Brando. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Okay. Here. So you put your hand on both of their shoulders, and both of you look as Dex closes his eyes in determination and squints really, really hard, and almost unintentional, his angelic wings burst out. These massive, probably, what would you say, like a. 14 like foot, foot wingspan at least 12 foot wingspan yeah. yeah just bursts out from his back and wraps around all of you and you when the you feel this rush of movement a nauseating feeling as you all appear back inside the very center of a swamp the swamp water all the way up to your knees and the wings unfurl around all three of you as at your feet is half of a creature with golden yellow eyes and one arm just laying on its back looking like half of it has melded into the ground um, and it looks up at all three of you knowing that this thing can regenerate i am without hesitation just pulling the sword out swinging it upside down grabbing with both hands and stabbing straight into this creature, if I can. Okay. Is anyone going to try and help him? Yeah, I'll uh, keep with what I know assumes to be working, and I'll freeze the ground under where this thing's trying to go into. Okay. Val? Yeah, I'm just going to try to wrap my whip around it and hold it still. Uh, it's currently melded to the ground. Like, it looks like this thing is made out of moving vine. You just could just, like, matter. wrap around its neck, maybe. Yeah, imagine that this creature is fused to the earth. Like, the whole body is just fused to the earth, and it's, like, slowly melting into the ground. So is its head could above the, the ground? Yeah, could the whip no. go around its head? No, it, it's laying... It's only the upper torso. It's not even the lower torso anymore. Just the upper torso, its head, and its arm... And it all looks like it is laying flat on its back, and it is m slowly melting into the... Then you could just, like, whip the shit out of it. Yeah. <laughs> if you wanted to. How much... Let me ask you this. How much damage does your whip do? I one think we just thought it was, like, one. One harm? Okay, don't even roll kick some ass for me. Uh, but Ace and Dex, I need y'all to roll kick some ass. Oh, I was gonna say that I was gonna help, uh... <laughs> Dex shove the sword through. Oh, okay. Then, then we'll help out. Uh, okay. let's see, kick ass for spells would be weird for me, so let's do weird. Um, should I wait? Should I do my roll before or after? Uh, after, <laughs> after <you tap> <laughs> okay. Oh, nice. Okay, Val, roll your roll your help. Um, so, what does help use? Uh, help uses cool. Cool, 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 cool. Um, okay, give me one second. Y'all got some pretty sick rolls. I haven't made mine yet. I got a bad feeling about the roll that I have coming. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. 
Um, that is going to be an eight. An uh, eight? You get a plus one? Yeah. That, uh, that makes it a seven. That makes it a seven. <laughs> it makes it a seven? Yeah, that makes my roll a seven. I told you I didn't have a good feeling about this one, but your help makes my oh. roll a seven. All right. So, Ace, you see the sword starting to, as you stand at the head of the creature with Val and Dex on the, your left and right, you slam the ball of ice into the freezing the ground and the regular you see Val grab the bottom of the hilt that is currently up higher and Dex holding the hilt with two hands as they both shove it in. You do not know how Holy Fire reacts to your arcane magic as you reflexively throw up an extra ice wall in between you and the three of them. As the sword collides through the creature, you hear a scream or plunges down into the creature, through it into the ice and ground, impaling the creature. You hear another scream that slowly starts to die off. And as the scream starts to die off, you hear a cracking sound of ice and sizzling water as the entire creature free instantly flash freezes and then explodes in a shower of it's it's weird because it's ice it's cold but it burns i need both val and dex to take one point of harm ignore armor okay oh i still take zero no I ignore armor, armor. Even like natural armor type shit. Ignore Ignores. your armor. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll take the one. So now, Ace, you are crouched to the ground. You have this half dome around you of ice. And you hear two bodies thud against the ground. And Val and Dex, when the sword collided with the body and the ice and body exploded in this it heat and shower of these ice crystals, the heat from the holy energy and you are flung back not very far just the one like five feet from the body dex you still have your sword in hand val you have been flung around and beaten your whole body starts to ache but you were all just sitting in the mud what do now I um I stand up and I offer Val a hand as if to help her stand up. There is currently a small crater of frozen ice between you and Val. I walk over to Val and offer a mm -hmm. hand to help Val stand up. I take his hand. I I just take a look inside the crater and see what's left of this whatever. There is nothing inside the crater. It is just a frozen crater of roots and vines and other plant material. Hmm. Um. Kind of curious. I want to just take a once over myself, make sure everybody's okay. But I'm also curious. Like, does it seem like the swamps reacted to it? Like, has the has the fog started to dissipate or anything? Sorry, I thought there was going to be more time for RP between the three of you. So I threw some food in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care about each other.
Yeah, let me let me fill you. In. Oh, Dex, that was awesome. You got your wings. You can fly or teleport. I I must have done something that um satisfied them. Yeah, I mean it was a selfless act. It looked like you wouldn't save Karen. My head still hurts. I'm just gonna lay here, guys, and I'm just gonna lay on the ground. Um, the fog does not recede. Uh, do you see or feel no difference in the environment? Um, so... But the monster... Guys, 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 guys it's not over. The... It's not over. Well, oh, that's for Ace. Val, on the other hand... Oh. You... The anger and pain that you were feeling earlier is no longer there okay then i'm like hey guys i think we did it uh, <laughs> well you just flip flop man I, I can't ever know where you're at yeah we're good everything is i think i think we're good i'm still gonna lay here yep i'm gonna lay here i'm just gonna so um so Dex watches anime, so I'm just gonna um, flourish the sword in my hand for a second, and then act like I'm sheathing it on my side, like a katana, before I just put it back inside my coat. Alright. So the three of you standing in the murk and the mire, what do uh, next? Do you want me to fly us back to Karen, or should we just walk? Uh, I think we can at least just walk for the time being. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't. After I just got it back, I don't want to use it. So, <laughs> a lesson learned. Um. So you all stop for a second, as if you're about to walk into a random direction, and you look around, and you are nowhere near anything that you remember. Oh. oh. So, when you say nowhere near anything, like, do we get blasted this, away, or... This area... No, you didn't get blasted away. When you teleported, you teleported to a different location. Um, so this thing was already pretty far away. Is what correct. You're like, this area is far more swampier than the lakefront that... Um the point where crocodiles might be a thing yeah probably i mean the water is all the way up to your knees just about do i see any crocodiles uh no. i revoke my previous opinion on teleporting because we don't know where we are so let's uh <laughs> bamf on over there please so, um i I crack my knuckles and rub my hands together. Yeah, yeah, sure. Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just come here. <laughs> and now it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it works. And all three of you teleport back over to where Karen is. And no car. <laughs> Alright, so... Wah. <sighs> Um, so, Karen, you might want to make a call to your insurance company. I'll, I'll, I'll do that, uh, not now. Um, however, not having a vehicle is gonna put a damper on the stakeout thing. So, as she okay. says that, it is just hitting Dex for the first time that you can't do a stakeout without a car, and I'm going <laughs> to collapse to the ground in defeat. <laughs> and with that, I'm actually going to go, because I have to get up in the morning. Okay. Well, uh... Let's see what I'm do we even need to do a stakeout now? Because this, this was our, our in with the witches. We now so have an act of good faith. So we can probably bait them into something. So Zed actually speaks up, and he's eating like it looks like a subway sub, 
And he's like, dang. Like a meatball sub? Yeah, exactly, a meatball sub. And he's just like eating it, and he just says, dang, that was awesome. You didn't even help. What? What are you talking about? Yeah, I did. I was in the backseat of the car when we hit the water. You can see, like, the bottom of his pants are wet. I, I immediately come to another realization. Oh. Right. That's cool. Kind of lost my phone, though. That sucks. Can I have a bite of your sandwich? Hey, y'all want to go back to that hotel? Yeah. Or y'all want me to... Yeah, sure. And he just, like, hands you the rest of it. It's, like, half of a meatball sub. Or do y'all want to go to the stakeout? Like, it's... We still haven't checked on Father, um... What's-his-face? Um... I think it's Vesky. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Father Vesky. I remember thinking it sounded kind of Italian, maybe. I don't know. If that's maybe. Italian. Mm -hmm. I mean, do we need to check in on him? It hasn't even been a day. We literally left that dude, like, a couple hours ago. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, he, he might be up to some kind of trouble, and who knows, the witches may have found him, or, you know, he might have accidentally turned the channel to the wrong channel, and, you know, a, a, a priest turns the channel to Cinemax. They I feel might like just we're just going to go talk to him and get wrapped up into his long lectures again with no reason to do that. Like Zed just stretches. Oh, damn. Yo, hey, so do y'all want to do the witches today or do we want to take an evening's rest and, you know, hit it in the morning? Um, I feel as though having had a near death experience between the both of you, um, you and Karen might wish to attempt to procreate, but that's just uh, my thought. I'm going to try to breathe without my lungs burning. Zed just kind of sits off silently when you think awkwardly at you both. Oh, well, see, Zed, there's this thing that humans do. It, nope, you... don't, don't even want to hear it. Oh, right, right. Oh, trust me, if you do, it's definitely not from him. I just wasn't sure if, if, if no, that nope. again. Not, that's Shh, enough. Zed. Nope. <laughs> Quite time. All right, Zed cracks his knuckles. I can handle it from here, guys. Don't worry. So where are we going? Dairy Queen. Disney World. No, um, the hotel, I suppose. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Uh, here, here, you know, uh. I, I can just I can just teleport us on over there, and then you can just teleport to where I am, and then you know that that'll that'll uh get you to the hotel. Hey, he just nods, and he puts a hand on Val's leg, and because she's laying down on the ground, and Karen, since they're both on the ground. All right, I, I go up and give uh I give Ace a big old bear hug and teleport right when I do. All right, and he teleports right where you are. Where where in the hotel are you teleporting? Right outside the door to my room. Okay. So in, like, the hallway? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, 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 I don't want to be seen. Is this a motel or a hotel? Mm, let's say kind of both. Let's say, like, the rooms are in a hotel, but there is, like, outdoor access if you want to go out the back door. Like, so... there's... there's Father Vesky is in my room, right? Correct. So but I'm is... going to teleport into Ace's room, assuming it's going to be unoccupied. Okay. Yeah. And there is the uh, the restaurant and the front lobby down. Okay. I I'm trying to learn from my mistakes and not be seen. So I'm going to go, I'm going to teleport to Ace's room. So as to decrease the likelihood of a normal folk seeing a person pop up out of thin air. Okay. So you all teleport to Ace's room. And Ace's Let me see. 
Ace's room wasn't across the hall from Vesky, right? Um, like your room wasn't across the hall, so I it's think we're next door. I don't think it was across the no, hall. No, I think I think Karen was next door. Anyways, it's it's irrelevant. Yeah, so you all teleport inside this like yeah, you know, it's just a mediocre hotel. And you're all together. Well, I'll leave you guys to it. I'm going to go check on Father Vesky, and I will give uh, Ace the opportunity, or Karen the opportunity to say or do whatever it is they want to do. Uh, my character is going to go lie down. Okay. In my room. All right, yeah, your rooms are, if I'm not mistaken, your room is yes. right next door. They are joining. Okay. Yeah, the party rooms. <laughs> they are. Yeah, okay. And, uh, Ace, are you doing anything? Or are you gonna kind of call it for a night, too? Uh, I think I'm pretty whooped after, okay. I don't know, everything. Yeah. So, you know, it's been a day. Okay. Um, Dex, I'm on Father Vesky. when you go to your room, there is no one there. You see his luggage case is sitting on the bed, and it is open, but there is no one there. Does there appear to be a sign of a struggle or anything? No. Um, I would like to yeah. use some magic. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so, would I be able to estimate generally what time he would have arrived at my room? No. But what time of the day was it that I gave him the key card and told him to go to the room? In the morning. What, I mean, I, I have a, a phone where I could have looked at the time. Roughly what time yeah. was that? Uh, go ahead and roll roll you know what i'm trying to do i'm trying to do yeah, what i know what you're trying to do I, i'm just gonna say no you you wouldn't be able to pinpoint a specific time then you i'm gonna have... estimate roughly 45 minutes after i gave him the key okay uh i'll say that your magic goes off um you can see your room you see him walk in lay down on the bed and then your spell fades after like 10 minutes of just watching him sleep on the bed. He just came in and went straight to sleep. Can I do the same thing for about an hour ago? Yeah. Um, you, you see him about an hour ago. He gets up out of bed, rubs his stomach, opens Psst. up the suitcase. You know someone that's an expert in finding missing people. Grabs, just throw it out there. Grabs a oh, small yeah. handbag out of his suitcase and walks out of the room um i will relay everything that you just told me to ace okay oh okay so are we afraid that he left of not his own accord i i don't know uh i'm afraid he might have ulterior motives i i don't know that's why i came to you you're better well, with this kind of thing. So in the vision, you saw him wake up, open a suitcase, grab a small handbag, and walk out of the room. Interesting. Okay. Okay, then he didn't leave forcefully. He probably got up and went to go do something else. It wasn't like he was forced to stay in the room. No, but where could he have gone? I, I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking it. He he took it. Did you see the bag? What, what kind of bag? Was it large bag, small bag? Maybe he went out to go get bag. food. I... He was broke. It's not like he can afford room service. Maybe. Um, it just I have a bad feeling about it. May I investigate a mystery? Yeah, sure. All right. You go into Dex's room, or are you going to investigate a mystery in your room? Well, I'll start off with Dex's thing and see where the trail <laughs> takes me. Okay. <laughs> Regret all the moves I've made today. And... Uh, that's a 10, because I get a plus one whenever it's tracking someone. Okay. Um, There isn't really much here. Uh, you do find, oddly enough, uh, there is a shit ton of lollipop sticks and wrappers all over the room. Uh, you look through the handbag, you see the same 
Priestly outfit. There's like six of them in this uh, suitcase. There is no wallet. There is no identification. There is no car keys. Uh, it's there. It you do find a hygiene bag, uh, an extra pair of sandals. Looks like some night clothes. But anything identifying him, currency. It there's none of that in there. Can I just ask a question and say yeah. where did it go? Um. Your best guess would probably be somewhere close. It's only yeah, probably you would you would think somewhere close. Are there any diners or anything that we know of? There is a restaurant like attached restaurant? to the hotel. Yes. Oh. You. Yeah, that's where you met Samuel. I'd I'd go check the restaurant. Are you, are you relaying that to Ace? Yeah, I think we should check the restaurant. Uh, can I just sleep? Uh, yeah, you can if... do you can do human things later. Okay, but like as soon as we see him, I'm, we're going. We're calling it. I'm going back to bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. Let's go to the diner. So all right, you all make your sopping wet coat. <laughs> yeah, you all make your way to the diner, <clears throat> and what? When you you don't hear any music. Uh, like before, there was a jukebox playing. There was someone washing dishes. There was people eating and talking. You don't hear any kind of music like that coming through the double doors to the restaurant. Oddly enough, you haven't heard any noise the entire time you've been in the hotel. Haven't seen any other people? Nope. What about crows? Nope. Do you go into the restaurant? I, I definitely do. Cautiously, but... I, I'm not pulling the sword out. Again, lesson learned. But I am going ahead and putting a hand in the inner pocket of my coat and grasping okay. the hilt. Okay. Just because it seems odd that there's no... Because well, we're still in the middle of the day, right? Yeah. Or, this seems odd. I'm just going to do a quick read of the bad situation just to see what... What's making my spider sense the tingle? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, let's see. That's uh, some sharp. Um, can I do the same? Yeah. Well, you could assist me, but... Yeah, all right. Well, we both got nines. Yeah, but if you assisted oh, me, yeah. it would make it a ten. I, I would have if I had thought of it before I did my roll. It's okay. Uh, both of you get to hold one. So let's go with ace first. Well, now, if he assists me, that makes it a 10. I, I'd rather assist, but I already did my roll. I think uh, never mind. Good. He's already done his roll. Never mind. All right, yeah, no, I'll just say, uh, are there any dangers we haven't noticed? Uh, dangers that stick out? No, not really. Ace? I mean, Dex? What's the biggest threat? You feel something familiar a overwhelming present a pressure around the room this eerie silence is very familiar to you it and you have felt it in the last 24 hours nice. oh it's uh what is her face alexandria um this wouldn't be anything that I would equate to something originating from Lucifer, would it? Uh, no. This is it. The eerie, it, even it, it is, even though it's eerie, and it's silent, you feel almost at peace. Like everything around you is still. Okay, but there's nobody in this diner. You have not stepped into the diner. I will step into the diner. When you open the door to the diner, what you both see is it is full of people, but they seem to be in mid-conversation, mid-drinking, eating. You see Father Vesky looking with a huge smile on his face, looking down at a plate with part of a steak attached to a fork and a knife in one hand, but everyone is frozen in place. 
and in the middle of the bar you see a figure with a bottle in one hand and an eight ball in the other currently pouring himself a glass with long blonde hair and white suit do i recognize this person you, you can assume it's gabriel yeah, I'm like, it's okay. and does am i to assume that ace sees this too <clears throat> yes ace is moving with you uh well ace gabe gabe ace uh, and by Gabe, I mean uh, the Archangel Gabriel, like, from the Bible. He does not acknowledge <clears throat> your presence. And he just knocks back this eight ball. And you can tell that there is several bottles on the counter around him. Gabe, you hear me? He... He quit. What do you mean? He turns around to look at you, and you can see that there is a distraught in his face. There, he has, he's blushing with, like, he has consumed, there's dozens of empty liquor bottles all over the counter around he's him. He's done some angel drinking, like, and... Okay. His hair is a mess, it's all drooped down in his face, you can see that there is um, not tears in his eyes, but his, they are welling up, and he just looks at you, and he just mumbles, he quit, Dex. Who quit? Lucy. And that is where we're going to end the session tonight. Okay, okay. Okay. Cool. Da -da 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 -da. Ah. Well, that's interesting. Okay. okay. So, end of session. Sorry to conclude. It is 15 minutes after 10. Um, but I do want to end it here before we get too much further. Uh, so, what say ye? End of session time or... Yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm digging. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, did we conclude the current mystery? One of them? Partially? <laughs> yeah. I mean... I, I would say, I would say, you, know, you reached an achievement. Uh, when y'all teleported to the... So... Just lost you, Tony. Yeah. Oh, yeah. can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, now I can. You just oh, cut out I, I said that when y'all teleported to the swamp monster, he did have... Damn it. He Lost did I have... I don't know what is going on uh, oh, with God. this thing. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. I said he only had one harm left ah. before he was dead when y'all huh. teleported to him. So that was... I calculated the car as four points of harm, but he does have a natural armor, and uh, the fire hurt him a lot. The sword hurt him a lot. Oh man, I can cast fireballs now, and I didn't do it because I thought the well, ice was his, really working. His sword also counts as a weakness as well. So, and so it's like holy damage. It's an evil creature. So it, it's a little different than just normal fire. Ah, uh, very well. Like, how much fire would your fire damage? Just one more point. It does. So, the missile does one, and if I make it fire, then it does another two. But I that also... Would have done three? Yeah. But I oh, also yeah, have to roll high enough, or else it spreads. <laughs> if I roll, oh, less, I if I roll okay. less than a ten, whenever I throw it, it starts to spread yeah. elsewhere. So, his natural armor was three. Uh, that's, that's why I told uh, uh, Brandon to not even roll for uh, kick some ass. Because that whip would have done nothing to. But, yeah. but with with my sword counting as a weakness, does it essentially ignore armor? Um, it it it's tricky. There's no indefinite rules about it. But uh, for him, I I would said yes. So that was just four points of great damage to him. Okay. Dang, with natural armor of three, that means you have to do four damage to even hurt him. Yeah. So am uh, I the person that damaged him in that fight? 
No, the car did a lot of damage okay. too. The car and but... and the uh, the ice with the restraining. So with the restraining of the ice, he had to literally break off a limb. So I just counted that as an extra harm for him because he does have a regeneration of one. So he can regrow limbs too. So it's, but yeah, I just used the monster builder stats that's in the book at the in one. Of, there's another expansion to this game, um, and I just use that to regenerate monsters. To have it work. like they can regenerate limbs. Yeah, so we found the ultimate strategy. We just have to ram them with a the car every time. Yeah, I mean, it's worked <laughs> twice so far. Y'all hit two different people with cars. We're just Grand Theft um, Autoing this the whole way. We just have to hope that uh, Karen has really good insurance. I mean, she's a tycoon, so does she really need insurance? She can buy a 2021 BMW tomorrow. All right, so now instead of going for stuff, we just need something that, like, Basically, is, is like some zombie apocalypse vehicle that we can just mow yeah. people down with. Well, some spikes yeah. under the and front. And just, of it. I mean, there's no arcane wards against uh, APCs. Just saying. <laughs> just drive it through the front door of the comic book shop in the middle of a town. Uh, true. Yeah. I actually thought about suggesting that it's maybe we just ram the, <laughs> the car into the comic book <laughs> shop and just fuck it. Let's just so, see where it goes. What happens? If I'm in a car and they drive the car into an area that's warded against angels while I'm in the car, you get uh, you get ripped to shreds. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it's like that. Uh, what was that movie? Resident Evil, when uh, that person was ducking around all the laser beams and the laser beam came. Th- oh, that's like yeah, Resident Evil One. That's a throwback. Yeah, I. Yeah. Or it could be like uh, from what was that movie, Thirteen Ghosts, when the glass door split and cut the dude in half. All right, end of session. End of session. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, yeah. Uh, did we conclude the current mystery? One of kind them. of. Yeah. Let's say yes. We kind of did. It's like halfway through. Uh, um. Did oh. we save someone from certain death? Yeah. I saved. Or Eric. worse. Yeah, and also the fisherman. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Morning. Okay, so yeah, let's say two t- two <laughs> yeses. Uh-huh. Uh, did we learn something new and important about the world? Lucy quit? Oh. <laughs> Whatever that means. I'm still trying to figure out what that means. He quit what? Don't know. We'll have to wait until the next session. <laughs> probably not on that one. Yeah, we probably didn't get that. Uh, uh did we learn something new and important about uh, about Karen about is a chaotic driver. Uh, yeah, yeah, we learned that. <laughs> yes, but she is also one of a kind. Not only did she run away, but she ran away to get the car to hit the monster. <laughs> <laughs> I ran just to come back. Get a bigger weapon. <laughs> She's like, I'm not gonna waste my bullets on this thing. Let me just throw this BMW into a lake. Why not? It worked. I'm just saying, whatever. Um. Okay. And do we have a plan for the next episode? Somewhat. Yeah. I mean, the the whole thing I kept coming up with is uh, use their. Uh, the fact that we killed the swamp thing to try and get us a, an in with the witches so that we can, you know, get them exposed. We put them in good faith to try and, I don't know, get them someplace vulnerable. And swamp thing needed to die anyway, so. Yeah. yeah. Two yeah. birds. And... Yeah. All right. Well, we will end our session here, guys. Well, thank you all so much for playing with me. Did yeah, that, this was a good one. Did that count as a plan? Like, how many points do we get? That's... Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Yay! Nope. Alright, everyone should be level 10 by now. Yeah, I don't you even should... need to count uh, experience points. You should all be at max level. So I don't need to count experience points anymore. Yes, right? you do. Uh, well, if we yeah. got three points from that one... Because if you get three or four, mark two. Okay, so we get two more points for that one. So I am at 11 and two check marks. 
Okay. Then I must have. So I haven't been recording experience points like from last session to the session before because I didn't think I needed to. Uh, well, remember every five levels you do get an improvement, advanced improvement, so you can still get those. You should only have two of them right now. This should be your second one. It, so okay. yeah, well, I've, got, I'm, I've got two. I'm level yeah. eleven. Yeah, I just got ten. I'm. I don't yeah. take a lot of. Yeah, you can at level ten. You can actually choose to play a new hunter type, so you can just like straight up be somebody else. You can go from being like a mundane to a chosen. Okay. You could. You could suddenly I would... become the chosen one. It's not happening. Not happening. I like my bitch. I Fair could. Enough. Create another. But that Good. requires way too much thinking, so but it's an option. Always an option. Oof. So well with that okay. guys, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and head out. Yeah. Yepers, I'm gonna head out too. I gotta get up in the morning. With uh, that Alright everybody. Well I will speak with all of you again. Alright. Hey, you go. did my mic keep cutting out like all night? Uh, a, a couple times, but.